Greetings and welcome to Unity of Columbus. My name is Darren Wells and I am your Board of Trustees President. And it is my great joy to once again welcome you to our Sunday service experience. We've got a wonderful speaker today, Jaziana Chalet, and she, ah, in so many ways, embodies that theme for this month, which is play, play. I play in the zone, free and unrestrained. Let's affirm that together. I play in the zone, free and unrestrained. And in these challenging times, there is no greater time than the now moment to harness that inner spirit of joy. And it is in the spirit of joy that we bless all of you for joining us. And so we begin, as we begin every week, with a unity blessing. And I'll affirm it once, invite you to repeat after me. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you together. We love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. Amen. And now is the time where we bless one another with a greeting. And so feel free to add a note to the live comments. Send us a shout. Let us know you're here. Um, maybe even with a playful greeting. I'll, I know, perhaps we can do a knock-knock joke. <laughs> um, but just something just that's, that uplifts and brings joy. And if you're watching later, feel free to put something in the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you. Bless you and welcome. So I spoke to a friend about this week's talk that Jaziana's giving about play and the importance of play and um, this person who is probably 40 years older than me said, aren't you a bit old to talk about play or to, you know, play as the realm of children was the message they were trying to get to me. And I don't understand that way of thinking, first of all, for those of you who know me. But the second thing is, it's just an act of fear to be afraid to play. So, if I were brave, I would play. Here's Janice Stanfield talking about what she would do if she were brave and how it's not really that hard to be brave in these kinds of situations. could not fail If I believed would the wind always fill up my sails How far would I go What could I achieve Trusting the hero in me If I were brave I'd walk the razor's edge where true believers dare to tread And never lose faith Even when losing my way What step would I take Today if I
to do what we secretly dream. What would you ask if you knew you could have anything? Like the mighty oak sleeps in the heart of a seed. Are there miracles in you and me? You know there are. If I were brave, I'd walk the razor's edge where true believers dare to tread and never lose faith, even when losing my way. What step would I take today if I? Please join with me in affirming our statement of faith. This is our core, our core teaching here in unity. And we know it, we live it, and we grow from this awareness. I'll speak it once and invite you to repeat it after me. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good, all love. Let's affirm that together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, all love. Now let's take that statement within. Affirm it silently to yourself. And so from the consciousness of faith, knowing these words as our, as our truth, we affirm together again aloud our statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, all love. And so it is. And 
So we believe that that presence and power of God is everywhere present, including inside of each and every one of you and in me. And so in that spirit, we light this candle, which shall serve as a symbol and a reminder to us all of those great words that Paul wrote in Colossians 1, verse 27. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And we begin this hour with sacred intention, knowing and honoring and beholding our innate divinity. The Daily Word for July 19th. 2020 is togetherness. I share God's love, peace, and joy. While I treasure my times of quiet and solitude, I also look forward to enjoying the company of family, friends, and members of my faith community. Whether we're working, volunteering, praying, or simply enjoying one another's company, our shared experiences allow me to support people I care about and feel supported in return. I enjoy and value togetherness throughout every season of my human journey. During times of trial, hardship, or grief, being in the company of friends and family helps comfort me and keep me strong. Likewise, during times of celebration, being in the company of others multiplies my joy. In times of togetherness, may the love, peace, comfort, and joy of God bless us all. And the scripture comes from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 44. All who believed were together and had all things in common. I'm going to read that again. All who believed were together and had all things in common. And that scripture is the living embodiment of our unity movement, dear friends. Yes, while we may be physically distancing, these weekly opportunities are our time to come together for togetherness, for all are one. And so there is no time or distance that separates us. And with that in mind, let's take a deep breath. And I'll speak today's affirmation once more and invite you to repeat it. I share God's love, peace, and joy together. I share God's love, peace, and and joy. And as it is, so we let it be. Please join me and Lisa Ferraro in singing Surely the Presence. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel the mighty power and a grace there's a holy hush around us i see glory on each face surely the presence of the lord is in this place surely the presence of the lord is in this place i can feel Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. 
and holding in our hearts that daily word of togetherness. We share in God's love, peace, and joy. This is the one presence and one power that is the universe, expressing in and through us. And it is only in consciousness that we can ever appear to separate ourselves from that one presence and power. In truth, we can never be separated from God. We can never be alone. For we are one with the one. And so, I invite us now to take part in an exercise of forgiveness. For it is truly fear and unforgiveness that block the flow and impede our spiritual growth. For when we hold resentments, when we hold grudges for, for, past, for past injustices, for past injuries, it is not the other, the perceived other, that we hurt. It is ourselves. It is our growth and unfoldment that we restrict, that we constrict through our holding on. And the practice of forgiveness is a very important and a very impactful and transformative spiritual exercise, for it is letting go and living in this now moment so that we may express that presence and power that we call God, that we call all good, all love more fully. And so will you join me this day and affirm after me, I forgive and I am free together. I forgive and I am free. And so from that consciousness of freedom, we turn our attention now to praying with others. We join in heart and in mind with our 24-hour prayer ministry, Silent Unity, knowing that God is not away from us. God is all around and within us. And so we pray affirmatively, knowing this, seeing from the divine light of the Christ. No longer do we see others or ourselves as sick, lost, tired, broken, impoverished. Rather, we see through the single eye of spiritual vision. We see as children of God. We see that we are whole, perfect, complete, that we live in an abundant universe, and that nothing, no thing, can keep us from our good. Nothing can keep us from that which we desire, that which is the, God, the Father's good pleasure to give us, the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, and so that we may share the vision of wholeness, of abundance, of oneness. I invite you to speak the names of those for whom you pray today aloud. COVID-19, suffering from the fear of its spread. Servicemen and women in Afghanistan. Precious Spirit, we know that you answer all prayer, and the answer, when we pray affirmatively, we know the answer is always yes, yes. And so we hold that yes in our hearts and release our prayers into the loving care and keeping 
of pure spirit, pure love, and we know, we know, and we trust, we trust in God. And for this time of prayer and for so much more, we are blessed and ever grateful. Thank you, Spirit. Amen and amen. Meditation. Meditation. Dear God, Holy Spirit, as we relax in this moment, this time, and this place, we say thank you. Thank you for a new day. Thank you for the good of this day. Thank you for endowing us with all of your attributes, characteristics, and qualities. Thank you for our family and friends, for our magnificent bodies and our material blessings, for challenges that help us to grow, and for breakthroughs that reveal more of you through us. Every mountain needs a valley to complete the cycle. For all things, no matter the appearance, are in divine order. Thank you for providing for us in all ways, at all times. Before they call, I will answer. As we breathe deeply and leave space between our breaths, we ask for divine wisdom to lead us this day. We pray that our hearts are open and receptive to your guidance. We bring all our cares, concerns, our hopes, and our dreams to the I Am Presence. Help us, Spirit, to release any thoughts and beliefs that no longer serve us. Please flow through us. Where we have doubt, bless us with faith. Where we have fear, bless us with courage. Fear can mean forgetting everything is all right. Please remind us. If we feel challenged in any area or any way, may we know there's an answer available to us. Help us let go of anything that keeps us from feeling your inspiration. Let us relax even more. Let go, breathe and trust in the knowingness that in this moment, all is well. Spirit, please show us how to prioritize and incorporate play and recess into our lives with ease. Right now, in the silence.
Dear God, as we ease back into our awake, alert selves, we allow the blessings of sacred awareness, divine intuition, and appropriate responses to our environment to permeate our consciousness. We thank you for all the blessings of this day yet to come. And we are grateful for opportunities to see how far we've come and the ability to start anew right now. May our thoughts reflect our true nature and our highest potential. May we know your peace. And so it is. Amen. Gaziana's talk today is about play, and here's a song that demonstrates play in a lot of different ways. Um, it's celebration. It's uh, performed by um, children from around the world who are playing while they're doing this, and uh, I wanted to give you a little information. It was produced by a group called Playing for Change, uh, which says it's a movement created to inspire and connect the world through music born from the shared belief that music has the power to break down boundaries and overcome distances between people. The primary focus of PFC is to record and film musicians performing in their natural environments and combine their talents and cultural power in innovative ideas called songs around the world, hoping to, they're hoping to um, increase joy, play, and music among children, especially. So there's something to celebrate.
you come on Celebration Let's all celebrate and have a good time Celebration We're gonna celebrate and have a good time morning. In the early 2000s, a friend, mentor, teacher, choir director, and a beloved member of our Unity community, Sally Van Lu, gave me a cherished gift. It was a t-shirt, and the t-shirt said, Spirit at Play. I loved that t-shirt, and I wore it proudly for years and years until it was just worn and worn, so I had to let it go. And whenever I wore that t-shirt, I felt like I had a free pass just to play. So just for fun, I Googled Spirit at Play. There's actually an early childhood program in Missoula, Montana, with the same name. Part of their mission says, nature and our beloved town are our extended classrooms. Guy kindness guides our days, and we believe in the power of learning through play and respecting each child's individual rights. What if kindness guided our days? What if we learned about ourselves and others through play? And what if we respected each other's strengths every day? Considering some of the serious issues we've been facing and the happenings of our world, I found myself feeling guilty about playing and having fun. And then a few weeks ago, on Oprah's Super Soul Sunday, I heard an interview with Zanab Salib, an Iraqi activist and author of Giving Women a Voice. She was sharing her perspective on wartime in her country. And she said that even as the shells rained down from the sky, the children were in the streets playing. And a teacher with a music school opened every day. Why? She said, because you have to keep on living. So it occurred to me that no matter what happens on a particular day, no matter how dark the events of a night, the next morning, the sun always rises. We are the totality of God in spirit, and that does include play. Our co-founder, Charles Fillmore, spent part of every day fishing, hunting, and playing golf. 
The Charles Fillmore Collection has a picture of him playing golf in 1930. What is it about play or adult recess that's so appealing? According to the Wall Street Journal, adult recess is booming because being a grown-up is hard. There are all kinds of adult play leagues for everything from cornhole to bingo to dodgeball to kickball, ultimate frisbee, and more. And although right now most of these leagues aren't meeting, they do emphasize fun over competition. They give us a chance to meet new people, interact, and connect with others, and have balance in our lives. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 says, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all of your might. There's a saying that how you do anything is how you do everything. That could apply to play. So what is play? Dr. Gary Chick of Penn State says this about play theory. Anything from a tennis match to a crossword puzzle qualifies. All that matters is it's pleasurable and not a necessary function of your day. Play is pretty much in your head. If you think you're playing, you are. So counting cars, doodling, counting stars, digging in the dirt, all of those can be play. So how does play affect us? Dr. Stuart Brown, founder of the National Institute for Play says that engaging in play increases optimism self-motivation, trust, and empathy for others. I think we could all use a little of these right now. We're all busy, though. So how are we going to get play or recess in? Well, let's use play as an acronym and see what, if we can come up with some ideas. So the P in play might be for presence. And that's presence for ourselves. Because I guarantee you right now, if somebody in your family or one of your friends or one of your neighbors would call you or knock on your door at a social distance, of course, and say, hey, I need a favor. I need something from the store. Mine and my children needs a ride. Would you help? More than likely, you would say yes. Do you give yourself that same consideration, though? Are you there for you? Play is an important part of self-love and self-care. It's giving yourself permission to do something you enjoy without feeling guilty. You're worth it. Science says that play reduces tension, clears our mind, and encourages creativity. Dr. Kristen Fielding, MD, adds that play, and particularly with physical activity, improves our cardio health, our lung function, and reduces our blood pressure. I was free researching some free online games, and I found a website by AARP, which is the American Association for Retired Persons, www.games.aarp.org. They have a lot of great programs in general, and some of our members here volunteer for AARP. So anyway, they had a game called Scramble Words. I was having so much fun playing with that game. I got into a zone and I totally forgot time. And before I knew it, it was 20 minutes later. They have some other really cool games on that site as well. All for free. And what about coloring, solitaire, and word games? A few years ago, I was working in an office with creative people. And I was part of a committee trying to think of things that could be done during downtime, like if the power went out, computers went down, and just in general, because sometimes creative people need to relax. So of course, my idea was to have adult recess, have board games, and get coloring books. And one of the managers said, adults don't color. So anyway, we did end up getting coloring books and board games. And when the power went out one day for like three hours, people were coloring and playing with the board games and just walking around. So just for fun, I looked up and I know that coloring books probably aren't sold as much as they used to be. Uh, the sales aren't as high. However, around this time, 2015, 2016, there were 12 million adult coloring books sold just in the United States. Why? Because color 
Coloring is calming, creative, and you can do it by yourself. So commit to just a few minutes a day. Show yourself some love. Continuing on with our acronym for play, the L stands for laugh. Give life the light touch. Have you ever really listened to a group of kids playing? I mean, really listened? Like driving by sometimes a schoolyard when schools were in, I would hear the wee and the screeching and the shrills and the laughter and the screaming. It all sounds the same. Every group of kids that I've ever driven by, it all sounds the same. And every time I hear it, I can't help but laugh myself because they're having such a good time. They're free and unrestrained. We have that same opportunity. We can be that way too. One day I was walking along in a neighborhood during the coronavirus time and I came across a hopscotch board, you know, on the with the squares on the sidewalk all done up in pretty chalk. And I got to admit, I did look around to see if anybody was watching. I didn't see anybody. So I jumped right on those squares. I was jumping up and down. I went up and down it twice. And it was funny because I couldn't remember, are you supposed to do one leg or two legs? Or do you hop here? Or which way do you go? I still did it. I still had a great time. It was fun. The average child laughs 300 times a day. We as adults, we average 20 times a day. We've got to catch up. And one day, I was having a really rough day. And I decided I was going to go and get myself some bubbles. Because bubbles are always fun. And I call this bubbles to bliss, bumps to bliss. And so what you do is, for instance, say you're having a car problem. Car problem. Maybe you had a little mistake happen between you and your partner or your children. Problem with family. Maybe you're running behind schedule and you're supposed to be someplace. Running late. So what you do is, I call those bumps. You blow all the bumps out into the universe and you let them go. Give them to God, surrender, however you want to say it. And you will notice that they quickly dissipate it. They were like gone because you don't have to worry about them or handle them anymore. So that felt so good. The next day I got my bubbles out and it was a really pretty day. And I noticed that I didn't feel like I had that many bumps that day. So what I decided to do instead was send out what I call bliss. And bliss can be joy, peace, comfort, healing, whatever you'd like to add to the world. It too will dissipate pretty quickly as you blow it out. However, that has such far reaching positive vibes, I think it'll stick around in the universe. If you're so inclined, give it a try. Let me know what you think. Proverbs 17.22 says, A joyful heart is good medicine, but depression drains one's strength. Dr. Michael Miller is a preventive cardi cardiologist, and he recommends that we laugh 15 minutes a day because laughter decreases stress, increases your immune cells, which helps fight off things that might come into your body that you don't want there, increases endorphins, and believe it or not, works your abs. Norman Cousins, a New Thought type writer, was well known for curing himself of a painful illness that left him immobile. He started watching comedy movies and laughed and laughed until he felt much better and his illness kind of went into the background. He wrote a famous book called Anatomy of an Illness, and he said, party laughter is a good way to jog internally without having to go outdoors. The A in play is for accentuate aliveness. In other words, move. One of the best things about play is moving. The benefits are immeasurable. There's team sports and individual sports. There's washing your car. There's marching in place. There's dancing, picking blueberries, chasing your kids and grandkids, chair yoga, seated knee lifts if you can't get up, planks, small weights, bocce ball, I even saw on the internet where you can do this exercise, opening and closing your hands. 
And it showed that if you did this a thousand times a day for 30 days, you'd be so surprised how strong you were after the 30 days. Now, I got to be honest, I've never made it past 30 times a day. However, I do a lot of other exercises, so I feel okay about that. When my gym closed, for instance, I went out and got a jump rope and I started my own workouts. But you can also play indoor games too, like ping pong. Uh, if you have access to a gym in different times, you can play pickleball, you can go fishing, you can swim. And I want to share about Ida Keeling. Ida Keeling really took accentuating aliveness to the ninth degree. She's a running icon and she's my personal inspiration as I enjoy my ultimate fitness journey. Ida began running at the age of 67. She had some um, sadness in her life, like a lot of families in America. She lost two of her sons to drug-related violence. And so one day she was feeling really down in the dumps and her daughter, who was a runner and a coach and an attorney, came by and said, hey mom, would you like to go for a mini run with me? And she said, well, I'm feeling pretty bad. I guess I will. She fell in love with running. She started doing it more and more. And she started feeling better mentally, physically, and just in general. And the reason she liked it is because she was moving. She felt stronger and better. And at first she was doing long distances. And then later she started doing sprints of 60 to 100 meters she wanted to go as fast as she could. And she said, the more I ran, the stronger and faster I became. It helped me immensely, and I'm still running now. In 2008, at the age of 93, Ida set a world record for her age group in a race in France. She was featured in an HBO documentary called, If You're Not in the Obit, Eat Breakfast. It was about people aging over 90. She's the author of Can't Nothing Bring Me Down, Chasing Myself in the Race Against Time, which was published two years ago. In 2016, at the age of 100, Ida became the first woman in history to complete a 100-meter run at the Penn Relays, which is the largest and oldest track and field competition in the United States. Last year, she said, now I'm 104, I'm not so fast, but I go whatever distance I can. And if I start a race, I finish it. I don't have competition. I'm always the winner for my age group. I go to the gym, I ride my bike, I work out, I stretch, I do push-ups, and my doctor says I'm as healthy as a 25-year-old. By the way, Ida turned 105 this past May 15th, 2020, and is still running. She has a website called healthypast100.com. And finally, the why in play is for us saying yes to our yummies. Just keep saying yes to any opportunities that bring you joy and support your well being. For instance, gardening, cooking. Here at Unity, we love sharing food over ideas and just having fun. So you might enjoy a great meal or a dish, painting, playing a musical instrument, writing, crafting, having a great conversation, museums, being in nature, swinging on a porch swing or hammock, creating apps for the computer, visiting the zoo, and be sure to be safe doing that, and an infinite number of other activities. Remember that anything you feel is play, so anything you feel is play. So travel, hiking, playing on the beach, stargazing, eating ice cream, reading, journaling, they all count. Learning a new language can also be play. Duolingo, a free app, has 38 languages. It lays learning out in a game-like format, and it's so much fun. You can do the lessons at your own pace and it encourages you along the way. Like it'll say, you did five in a row. You learned 50 new words today. You're doing great. You're amazing. You're smart. At any rate, learning a second language is very good for your brain health at any age. So there are endless possibilities. Presence with self. Laughed often. Accentuate aliveness. Say yes to yummies. Please join me in today's affirmation. 
Today, I live freely. I am spirit at play. Together, today, I live freely. I am spirit at play. See their interconnection between all your parts, being one with, unified with, embodied and immersed in your highest, best, unique expression of the Christ within. As within, so without. God bless you. Thank you, Jaziana, for that wonderful message. Oh, I just, I love you. And... I'm so grateful for you. Thank you for uh, joining with us and for agreeing to, to speak in this, this new normal that we have of uh, the Sunday experience. And bless you for your wonderful message on play. <laughs> and now is the time in our service in which we bless the gift of our treasure. So I invite you to, with your gift of imagination... And it is one of our spiritual gifts to hold our gift, whatever it may be, in consciousness. Imagine it as, as money just overflowing out of our hands. And I invite you to affirm after me our offering blessing. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. Let's affirm it together. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. Join me in singing, God is my source. Oh.
Speaking of playing in the zone, free and unrestrained, let us bless the world's children, all the children in our lives, all of the children who are out there now playing with the light in their hearts. I have said more than once that children are our greatest teachers. And so, you remember the unity blessing we did earlier? We rub our hands together like so. And if you'll repeat after me, we love you. We love you. We bless you. We bless you. We truly appreciate you. We truly appreciate you. And we behold the Christ in you. And we behold the Christ in you, just as you are, just as you are, and just as all of you are. Mm. Please join me in singing, I am free, I am unlimited. I am free, I am unlimited. There are no chains that bind me. I am free, I am unlimited. Right now, right now. I am free, I am unlimited. There are no chains that bind me. I am free, I am unlimited. Right now, right now. Let us affirm our prayer for protection, knowing that we are free and unlimited. Ha! Mmm. Playing in the zone, free and unrestrained. That, that free and unlimited song just brings that home for me. Mmm. Get all caught up every time I hear it. All right, the prayer for protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. And now let us join together in song holding our world in prayer through the power of our singing voice. So let's sing it out loud. Let's sing it out strong. Let there be peace on earth. So, as you go forth this week, be present, laugh, move, and say yes to play. Have a fantastic week. Mm -hmm.